Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Monday evening here in Australia. Market up ever so slightly, so 1.5%, hanging around that 2.4 ish trillion dollar mark. We're up a little bit higher, but look, we've been down lower, and we are still under that 2.5 trillion dollar mark. Dominance. Still the same, BTC dominance that is, just hanging around that kind of 40-ish percent range. A little bit of volume there, which is nice. Obviously, people are buying in, but again, we'll have to wait and see. Bitcoin price, 50000 Nice. It's been higher, it's been lower. We're still really waiting to see what's happening. It really is just trading sideways at the moment. But that's good for altcoins when it does that. And ETH gas prices, far out, under $4. They continue to go down. This is amazing. I'm just waiting to see how long that will last and how much lower they can go. All right, so we can see it's a bit of green there, some nice green. I mean, look at that, ADA. It was never going to stay down for too long. I was going to buy some and didn't at like $1.30, $1.20 or something, and now it's starting to pump. So, you know, there's always FUD about projects out there. Whenever they go down, people will kick them and say, see, I told you they were dead and this and that and was happening. And eventually, if they're a good project... And I believe ADA is a good project. That's why I have some. They will start to go back up. So just keep that in mind. Simply because a project is not doing well for a specific period of time, particularly after it's hit sort of all-time highs, don't just think that it's dead. Sometimes it is. You've got to be careful. And <laughs> let me say, I'm never offering you financial advice. As always, it's just my personal opinion. But I think ADA might have found the bottom. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe not. Maybe the whole market's still going to go down. Again, we'll get to that and have a look. What's performed the best in the last 24 hours considering the market is up? There we go. Cadena, Cadena, sorry, nice, nearly 15% move. Aave have been talking about this for ages and now it's starting to make a move, 288. Uniswap making a move, Theta making a move. So we've got plenty of projects that are starting to make some moves. But again, we just got to wait and see, can this last? This is the start of a week when we're seeing a pump, which is nice because it's no good when you kind of see it, you know, on the Thursday, Friday sometimes because the weekend comes and then you just lose a lot of it. So fingers crossed. All right, what's not faring so well in the top 100? All right, Olympus, Dow, uh, that's quite choppy action all over the place. Curved is down a little bit. Sand is down. Uh, Terra Luna is down. And Omi is down. But look. The losses are pretty small. Outside of Olympus Dow, that's not great. About 13%. That hurts a little bit. The rest of them, you know, 1%, sort of 2%, 3% here and there. You're not really too worried about those kind of losses. All right. Let's have a look at Bitcoin, see where we're at. So as we can see, it's just traveling sideways at the moment. It, ha it You know, it's it hasn't made its mind up yet. Is it going up? Is it going down? We'll have to wait and see. Like I said, if we do come down and we bounce off this line from the outside here, that can still be bullish, but we've got to wait and see. It, you know, it could continue to just bounce all the way down on the outside, and that's obviously not great. But at the moment, I think things are looking a little bit more bullish. You know, there's a little bit more positive sentiment, but that doesn't mean we're out of the woods just yet. Just yet. I still think this uh, is definitely something that could be in play. Now, as I said, I've been, you know, telling everyone about Aave and, you know, possibly getting institutional adoption and Aave Arc, which they originally were going with Aave Pro coming out. The DeFi plays are starting to heat up again. So today we're going to have a look at some of the DeFi plays that I like. Now, again, it's just my personal opinion. You got to work out for yourself whether you like them or not, whether they're a good play. But I think they're starting to wake up. Here's Aave, and like I said, it's basically traded sideways for the entire year. Now, it's got higher and it's got lower, but particularly down this kind of one, uh, I was going to say 180, but it was a little bit more, kind of the $200 level, that was a pretty good buy-in price. But I mean, if you could get it down here, like in the 160s and sort of 180s area, that was a pretty good pickup, because look what we've got now. Now, again, this is in the dollar, so it started to find its way up. Now, will it last? Who knows? We could still be, you know, there's some downward kind of motion here that we could definitely still be sort of seeing. So we could absolutely get rejected from where we are right now because we're basically touching it. So this might roll over. But even if it does, I think it's just a matter of time before DeFi is going to heat up. Again, with the news, you know, uh, Ciba Bank, the first to whitelist Aave, 
And again, there's talk of a number of other banks, you know, they need to find ways to make some yield for their customers because 0.025% just isn't going to cut it when Aave and Celsius and, you know, block find that. I mean, Aave is not offering 10%, but Celsius and uh, BlockFi, they are offering near 10%. Aave, I think they're offering something, they're going to offer something like around about 4%, and people will jump at 4% compared to the 0.025%. So I just like Aave at the moment. Now, again, I wouldn't rush out and, you know, just buy all of it because it's at a resistance point right now. This could reject, and maybe we do have to come lower, but I just get the feeling like maybe we're finally starting on the upside because we have set in a new high. We beat this one, and now we are looking to try and claw our way back up to here, and then we got to get up to here, and then we got to get up to here, and then we got to get up to around about sort of here, and then we got to beat there. So things are looking okay at the moment, but we're in a bit of a danger zone. But again, even if we do get rejected from here, I think DeFi is about to have its next kind of, you know, like DeFi summer. Although, it'll be DeFi winter over in the States, DeFi summer over here uh, in Australia. So we've just got to keep an eye out for that. But it's not just the dollar. Again, you, if you're trying to work out how well your coins are doing and you're simply going against the dollar, you're getting it wrong. You need to take into account that the dollar is weakening constantly. So of course these cryptos, particularly when they're capped, and I'm pretty sure Aave's got like 16 million coins or something, that's it. 16 million, it's less than Bitcoin. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna be worth more than Bitcoin, but it has a, a less of a supply and it's capped, that's it, that's all they've got. So they should be constantly increasing against the dollar in the long term. Short term, they can be up and down and fluctuate, so the dollar is not the greatest thing to compare them by, but it is something we need to look at because there's times where Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to lose out to the dollar. That is simply how uh, this, you know, it works. There's times where one will outpace the other, so we need to look at a few. So in the dollar, looks like it's breaking out. We just got to wait and see. How is Aave against Ethereum? I was telling everyone this is way below its, you know, kind of floor price, and look what happened. Boom! It jumped up. And now it's starting to find support on this spot. Imagine what's going to happen to Aave if it starts to make another move like this. And imagine if it gets back up to here near old all-time highs and you are smart enough to get it down here versus Ethereum. You're going to be feeling pretty good. Now again, there's n this is not financial advice. It may not play out, but it's the risk to reward. All right, what's the risk? Maybe it can go a little bit lower. It's already basically, when it was down here, below its kind of floor price. It doesn't mean it can't set in a new floor. But it didn't take too long for it to jump back up above here. What about against Bitcoin? How's it doing against Bitcoin? Same sort of thing. It didn't come down to its floor price, but it's setting in new floor prices against a number of coins. And against Bitcoin, came down, again, an old all-time high. We were looking for it to become support and it broke down below, but it was a fake out to the downside. So faked out, came back up, jumped up above, came back down, retested an old all-time high and started to make another move up. Now, again, this could roll over. It's always possible. But I just think at the moment with the momentum and things that are going on, it's looking good. But in saying that, all of this is still based on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin suddenly dumps tomorrow, this will all get invalidated, pure and simple. Bitcoin still leads the market, but also Ethereum. So again, that's why I compare everything now to the US dollar. How's it going against the dollar? If it's constantly losing against the dollar, well then that's a worry because the dollar's being printed into oblivion and these aren't. How's it going against Ethereum? Well, it's set in a new all-time low. So again, that is scary, but again, the risk to reward. Can it really go much lower or is it more likely to go higher? And what happened? It went higher, but again, this still could set in another new low. We don't know yet, but it's just the way it's looking. You've got to make your own minds up. Like I said, I was pounding the table about Aave and I started to buy some Aave when I think it was more down around about here. I got myself a bigger sizable bag than what I originally did and it hurt watching it go down. And I didn't buy any more here because I had already bought here, so that's all right. 
Now we're just waiting to see. All right, we spoke about Uni going on to Polygon. Have a look at this. Uni has been in an accumulation phase for almost a year, since the 30th of January this year. Now it's been higher, it's been lower, it's been higher, it's been lower. Look where it is now. It's basically where it was almost a year ago. I was telling everyone about Polygon when it was doing something like this, a big accumulation phase. Now it's not just perfectly straight, it's up and down and all over the place. I think uni might be getting ready to make a big move. There are never guarantees in life, so again, don't rush out and take this as financial advice. I can just tell you what I'm seeing. I am buying some uni at the moment, not a whole lot, because I got a little bit wrecked by uni. I bought a lot of it up sort of here in the high 30s uh, to even sort of $40 ranges, and it didn't pay off, and I had to sell for a loss. But again, I only did that because it would help bring down uh, some of my profits that I had made. It wasn't that I'd given up on uni, I've still got half my bag, but I bought half of it fairly cheaply, and I bought half of it fairly expensive. So now I'm going to start buying some uni, but I'm not jumping into it because, again, this could fail and roll over. How's it doing against ETH? Oh, sorry, we already looked at that. How? No, we didn't. Uh, that was uh, Ave we were looking at. So now have a look at how Universe ETH is doing. A very similar picture to Ave. Are the DeFi projects all starting, well, not all starting, but starting to play out fairly similar? Look at this big move, and then we came down and set a new low. Ave versus ETH came down, set a new low, starting to make up uh, ground, and again, using that as support now. Universe ETH getting up to where it is. Now, again, just be careful, it could roll over. How's it doing against Bitcoin? Something similar. We had a point here where it has been resistance before and support. So it was resistance here, but then it had a big pump up. It's been resistance here, and it's been, I mean, not quite support, but it's been pretty close down here, and it's found support, and now it's starting to make a move. So for me, I think uni's looking nice. Now, again, don't rush out and buy it, because there is still risk. The risk is, maybe this has to come down lower against BTC. Now, that doesn't mean it can has to lose dollar value. It just means maybe Bitcoin gets on a big run, and uni just holds its dollar value. That will bring this down because it's not losing against the dollar, it's simply losing against Bitcoin. But I think Uni with the, you know, the partnering up with Polygon and just that big accumulation phase versus the dollar, I think it may have found a flaw. We'll have to wait and see. Synthetics is something I really like. Now again, have a look at this. You can now buy it for the same price that you could buy it in August last year. And that was getting close to the kind of uh, peak of that DeFi summer. Again, it still went up a little bit in dollar value, but now it's come back down. It looks like it's found a floor somewhere around about sort of $5-ish. And we've had a bit of a bounce. Now, just be careful because this, again, could roll over. There's a lot of FUD around regulation and all the rest of it, but I still like synthetics. I think it's got a great future. Uh, it's got, you know... Not so much partnerships, although they are partnerships, but it's had forks, I guess, that have come off it. Quenta, Thales, uh, Alien, I think, or Alien, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, there's a number of projects that have come off it, and they've given away free airdrops for it. So you've already missed those, unfortunately, but they are still continuing to build, and I think there will be more to come. So for me, I like Synthetics at the moment, and I am buying. Now we go over to Synthetics versus Ethereum. Have a look at this. It is now in my buy zone. So again, when it's under this yellow is when I'm considering it. Doesn't mean I'm buying it. And again, we just need to be careful. This hasn't set in a new all-time low, but it doesn't mean it has to either. It is looking nice. It did set in a low, and it looks like it's starting to make its move. So for me, I'm going to chip away at a little bit of synthetics at the moment. But again, I'm not going too crazy on anything because it's still based on what Bitcoin's doing. But I did say if I saw projects that I like get down to certain prices or points against Bitcoin or Ethereum, I would start to buy. So for me, I'm starting to buy some synthetics. I like it at this price. Doesn't mean it can't go lower. Synthetics against Bitcoin. Again, something sort of similar. Look at this. Old resistance and support levels. It came down, made a new bottom, and now it's coming back up. But again, we just got to be careful and wait and see what happens here. All right, last but not least, Link. Link, have a look at this. 
It has been in accumulation basically all year. We looked at this. What is Polygon now doing? Good projects are starting to break out even though they've been quiet for a long time. It's been higher, it's been lower, it's chopped around and look where it is. Basically back where it was in January this year. That's almost a year of accumulation. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing here. I get the feeling like if DeFi starts to pump, Chainlink will start to pump. I just think Chainlink's a good project in general. But you got to make your own mind up, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look at it against Ethereum. Again, way down in Ethereum. Look what it did. Old support resistance. Found, used it as support. And now it's starting to make its move up. It is looking quite similar to the synthetics uh, versus Ethereum. So where are we? Have a look at that. I mean, this was a bit more up and down all over the place. But old support resistance. And you could even bring this down. And let's look at this. Now it looks a whole lot similar. Just Chainlink had the one big one in the middle, wasn't as volatile and all, all over the place. And now look, fake out to the downside, coming back up, and looks like it's about to make this a support. All right, link against Bitcoin. Have a look at this, you can't make this stuff up. It's bounced around here a number of times, and it's bouncing around here again. Could it go lower? Absolutely. Could it go higher? Absolutely. All right, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really looking at the DeFi plays at the moment because they're the ones that are down the most. They've been quiet. No one's really been talking about them. So I believe this is the time to start chipping away at them and then start to take some profits when things like this start to happen and wait for it to start to cool down and get very quiet. And good projects. Again, if you believe in a project and you're keeping up to date with it and the things that are doing and it's building and all the rest of it, just because the price is, you know, as they say sometimes, shit in the bed, does not mean the project's dead. It's just simply the cycles. Everything goes through it. Google is not always pumping. It comes down. Tesla's not always pumping. It comes down. Microsoft and, you know, MicroStrategy, you name it, all things like that, have their moments where they shine. And then they will start to cool off because people will start to take profits and there's just not enough buyers at those prices anymore. I believe that is what's happening to all of these projects. I like all of these projects, but that's me. Just because I like them doesn't mean that you know they are good or the greatest. It just means I really like them. I've invested in all of these and I'm going to continue to invest in them because I think now is looking like not too bad a time to get in. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.